The State of the Nation, that's what we'll focus on here this morning on the program. And the Minister of Information joins us now, Mr. Labaran Maku. Thank you for coming on this morning. Uh, thank you, um, my brothers and viewers across the country. Indeed, tough time, uh, as it were. All kinds of opinion definitely will be just running through this morning. The rumor mill will be busy in terms of security now. That's what just uh, bothers a lot of people now. And they all look to government. Remember we said the other time, look, even the best of plans, one singular action just looks as though nothing has been done previously. But at the moment, what is the thinking of government now? What's going on? Well, the thinking of government is consistent, um, that terror has arrived on this land, and terror is evil, and terror uses methods that are not conventional, and terror strikes at the weakest points of society. Their security is likely, very unlikely to be present. It goes to the most vulnerable sections of society, because most of the terror guys who engage in this, they are there to destroy life. Um, and, and, and if you look at the pattern in all countries since 9-11, um, wherever terror <coughs> enters, it's a protracted struggle. It's a long drawn struggle to defeat it. Take a look at Afghanistan. We've been coping with it for almost 10 years now. It's not completely defeated. Uh, look at Algeria. They've been coping with it for almost 10 years. It's not completely defeated. It's just made you know, a, a, a huge entry into Nigeria now. The first message to Nigerians, is that the president and all of us who are in this government will never, never have peace in our hearts until terror is defeated. It is the commitment of the president and the government to secure the life and properties of Nigerians. There is no leader that will be happy when his citizens are killed, especially innocent people, and when property is destroyed. So daily, we are working, changing plans, deploying troops, deploying forces, enhancing security, I mean, intelligence capacity. Because the way to defeat terror is not just deployment of troops. The deployment of troops is actually firefighting measures. The real measure to defeat terror is when you increase in intelligence. And Nigeria has been investing the last year hugely in intelligence capacity. And also, we're also networking with other countries with long-term experience in defeating terror uh, to create security pacts that will enable us to learn from, from, from them. We also enter into new technical capacity, buying new technologies and deploying them in the fields. What we have done recently, the president um, convened an air core security summit where security chiefs in the continent are now meeting regularly to study cross boundary crimes. Because some of what we are seeing in Nigeria is that the attacks are sometimes by foreigners who cross the border through Cameroon, through Chad, and Niger Republic. And their theater stretches right from here up to Mali. Training camps have been also located in Algeria where these people train and then come through the northern boundary into Nigeria. What Nigeria has been doing in recent time is to set up security posts in these countries to monitor the movement of these criminals and also to share intelligence. And just allow now, me to this may not have yet translated in total defeat of terror or um, uh, stop their capacity to, for surprise attacks, but I want the people of this country to believe and to trust that this government is deploying every capacity and increasing that capacity daily to deal with these terror groups. Well, that is, uh, sorry, let, let me butt in here. That is the area I want to come in uh, yes. about the people believe in the government. Yes. Because uh, looking at headlines this morning, even on our news last night, yes. it, uh, we also talked about it this morning. It's uh, quite a, a pathetic one, knowing that uh, some churches are already calling off uh, their New Year's uh, Eve uh, Mass. Uh, so uh, they believe, is that a belief that the government is not in charge? Or some of this equipment you just talked about haven't been deployed to some of these churches to actually comb the areas just in case there are some explosives planted? Well, uh, <coughs> you know, usually when terror strikes, there will be panic. You know, and the purpose of terror is to, is to cause panic. And they go to maybe um, a place like a church located downside side of town where they believe maybe security awareness is low then the strike the, the idea is, is to cre create fear in society and panic which is exactly what they want to achieve so um, my appeal to Nigerians is, is we have entered a new phase in our national life we need to develop that confidence in ourselves we also need to cooperate with government security agencies. If the trust between government and the people is broken down, terror would have succeeded. 
One other thing that these groups want to cause is to create panic between Christians and Muslims and hatred. Because the idea of striking churches on Christmas Day was to ensure that Christ Christians would wake up the following day and hate Muslims around and create a religious war. Because the purpose, you know, is to destroy the country, is to destroy the state, is to cause panic in Nigeria. And that's exactly what they have done in other parts of the country. The first message is we must know that on a daily basis we are increasing our capacity. The other element is also um, we, we began a public awareness campaign because for you to succeed in defeating terror it's not just a question for, for, for security forces. But every citizen must today have the awareness that we are all potential security informants and agents in our communities. Which is very important. Which but is again. Because, because then we will know. For example, um, they, they struck through vehicles parked through uh, in the church premises. If the awareness was there and vehicles were parked far from the premises of the church, it would be easy, you know, also to defeat uh, their strategy. So what we need is greater cooperation and community awareness. And also they, we must take responsibility in our various communities to watch out. Yesterday I, I spoke out. I said, look, in the north right now, we are calling on northern leaders, community leaders, religious leaders, traditional rulers. Because these terror groups are not spirits. They are not. They are, they, they are human beings. Are they responding? Of course, there is, a, there is a response. If you look at after the Christmas attack, you saw a number of northern leaders speaking against terror, you know, for the first time, more forcefully. You saw the Sultan of Sokoto come out openly and visit the president, you know, to show displeasure. You saw the governor of Niger State, who is the chairman of northern governor, speak out forcefully that we must, you know, go the next step further uh, to defeat these groups. And to defeat them means that the entire northern population must rise against these groups. Because, as I keep saying, every community knows its witches, its thieves, you know, its troublemakers. There is no community where trouble people, where, where criminals are not known. The idea is for every community from the smallest unit of the village uh, to the hamlet, to the local government, and to the state, to rise in all the 19 northern states against these groups and then, then mobilize we, stakeholders. Then if they know them. Yeah. Then mobilize stakeholders. Then nothing, the problem is hard is when, when the public is mobilized at that level, there will be sensitivity because mm -hmm. that is what is required and that is what the government is also working at because it's just not a matter of security. Every state governor must take responsibility for the security in their state. Every community leader must take responsibility for the security in his community. And any stranger, any group of people who enter any community you don't see them in the morning, you see them in the night. There must be information available to the community data on to the security forces. But there are fundamental so, challenges with that uh, particular move. Because, yes. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, all, on the Twitter line, social networks, the first thing they talk about is police. And that's about the first interaction that the man on the street has with government at any level. And so if the relationship between the citizens and the police is not cordial, then there's a problem with trust. That now has to be addressed. What is being done about the police? Definitely, you know, most in all countries, people don't like the police because the police are the face of the state. The police are out to enforce law and order. So in most parts of the world, it's not only in Nigeria, there's always a suspicion of the but police. But it's very high in Nigeria. Oh, well, very, it's, very it's, high. It's, it's high in many countries other than Nigeria. But the truth of the matter is the police play a crucial duty and role in securing our lives. When I see a lot of condemnation on the pages of newspapers, of police, of state security service, of soldiers, I said, look, the time we are now is for the citizens and security forces to close gap. We need the police. We need the presence of security in our communities to succeed. We need partnership between the security forces and citizens to succeed. The police serve us. The citizens can never, never have peace anywhere in the world without police. And the police are the most important arm. You know, of addressing the question of security but they in civil society. They don't society. act as though they are on the streets with the people. Well, they do. I, I, I think, I think part of it, part of part of what 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 we have is, you know, globally, people don't like police presence, and it is wrong. I, I think, yes, I believe the police need to do more. Police forces, security forces need to do more to sharpen their citizenship relationship no, so remember with the that people. When the president came in, not long after that, he talked about the relationship between the police and the citizens in terms of how they relate and hand or treat them. Because they complained of being mistreated. Nothing wrong with the police. I mean, Nigerians love to see a good police doing his job. They like to help. But how do they deal with when you have the attitude to come and volunteer information? The police has been help? going through a lot of reforms. 
there have been a lot of reforms and work going on in the security forces, particularly in the police. Apart from new set of equipment, there have been a lot of training, you know, in the police to sharpen their citizenship relationship, to change their attitude, you know, uh, to the public. You know, it goes on. But the truth of the matter is we are, we are in an emergency situation. You know, so we, we need to know that this partnership, there will always be quarry between the police and citizens because when something goes wrong, it's the policeman that goes to make an arrest. It's the policeman that goes to stop a riot. It's the policeman that goes to say, this should not be done. And generally, individuals don't want that in those times. So the police do the work of keeping peace. And for that reason, there will always be some level of suspicion. Even in England, even in America, you yeah. see people talking about But the reality is, I agree, we need a lot of work within the police, within the security forces, to improve their relationship with the public. But at the same time, the public must also appreciate that as imperfect as the police force may be, we must take at that level and relate with it and work to improve. Even citizenship attitude to the police is another matter to be changed. You, but, see, you, you, you see people also not appreciating the police. If these guys sleep on the road. If you look at mobile police, they abandon their families. They live under difficult circumstances. They deny themselves the comfort of their family in times of ceremonies and so on to secure our lives. We must also appreciate them. They are not perfect, but they do a great job for us. So I think, take a look at what would have happened if the police were not there. Then you will appreciate that they are doing a great job for us. Yes, all of us, the police and us, we must approve, approach each other in a position of new thinking that we all need each other. Okay. And I think a lot of work is being done in that area.